we're coming to, I don't think that's video number five for the series on pharmacology test taking strategy. This is the last one. And then it's designed to show you some of the skills you need, strategy to have answer pharmacologist questions easily. I pick some questions that has concepts you need to apply to be able to answer these questions. First question, straightforward, concept-based. Which of the following teaching is indicated? And this is caring for a client prescribed phenoxin. I've underlined two things. Those are your buzzword. Phenoxin indicated teaching. Pharmacology, you need to recognize the medication. What is this? It's mono amine oxidase inhibitor, right? Mono amine oxidase inhibitor, what should you teach the patient? Tyramine food. That's all. Therefore, what do you think? Avoid food high in potassium? It's nothing to that. Need frequent lab grow? You don't need lab grow for this. Hey, red wine? Yeah, excellent. Tyramine food, cheese, a cheese, fermented food. Take it at night, there's no restriction. So these are the way to answer question and then to find the medication and know the teaching, which one is indicated, indicated, whatever is contraindicated, I pick it. Whatever does not apply, I let it go. So the right answer is number three, red wine. So anything that is tyramine is your answer choice. Number one, down. Number two. And next is caring for what? A client prescribed retazine. Which of the following teaching should the next include a discharge? Once again, you on that the retazine and which one we should include a discharge is a teaching. Did you recognize this? Calcium channel blocker. What would they do? They're going to block their calcium and prevent muscle contraction. When the muscle does not contract, blood pool in the external environment. So the extremities, there's going to be blood pooling. If blood pool, you get edema. Blood is going to pull in your face. You're going to get headache and flushing. Your blood pressure will go down because of severe vasodilation. You get dizzy. It's nothing to do with sexual dysfunction. It has nothing to do with avoiding salt substituent, salt substituent as high potassium. This is calcium channel blocker. It has nothing to do with calcium. You see, way to answer test questions, pharmacology. You just break it down and it becomes easy. You don't even have to think that fast. This is the same thing. Number three, select or apply. And this is caring for a client with severe dry eyes. His eyes is dry. Which of the following teachings should the nurse provide the client to help with the dryness? What are the two ways? Severe dry eyes. I look at it, I say, this has something to do with the eye. And I look at the answer choice, I'm seeing vitamins. So, well, there's no other medication except vitamin. Remember, vitamins are medication. The way to answer this question is test taking strategy, pharmacological way, adapt and case way. I know the thing has something to do with the eyes. There's one vitamin that I know that take care of your eyes. It's vitamin A. Therefore, anything that will help with vitamin A, I'm picking it. Vitamin B12 is usually gastric bypass patient involving peripheral neuropathy and other symptoms. Calcium and vitamin D, yeah, is on. It has nothing to do with your eyes. They deal with what? Your bone. Hey, I see vitamin A. I'm picking it. Vitamin A, what is the source of vitamin A? Yellow, red, green, leafy vegetables, carrots, all those things, fresh, greening, whether they are green, they are red or yellow, yeah, they are all good for vitamin A. 
I see cheese. And so this is a dairy product, usually vitamin D and calcium. It has nothing to do with vitamin A. So your right answer is three and four. You see how you can break down the question. You know what you're looking for is the eyes. I'm looking, pay attention to the eyes. Anything that is related to the eyes is your answer choice. Okay, making answering questions fun, right? Same thing, same strategy. Which of the following need immediate intervention? You have to intervene. And this is caring for a client with what? Kawasaki disease. Client was giving what? Immunoglobulin. Client was giving immunoglobulin. These are medications. So which of these the next need intervention? Bring your content. If you have Kawasaki disease, I give you immunoglobulin. You should not get any live vaccine. Therefore, is there a live vaccine here? That's the key strategy. I see diphtheria, I see the partners, and I see pathosis. This is the way they usually write it. TDAP. They all come together. They cannot put a live vaccine with a non-live vaccine together. Usually, this is given as one shot. Partners, pathosis, and diphtheria all together. Therefore, I know test taking strategy. They all have to be non-live. So diphtheria is good, tetanus is good, and pathosis test taking strategy. I got to pick number three. Number three, rotavirus is a live vaccine. So Kawasaki patient cannot get it for at least six, six months to a year. Okay. And finally, last question. Which of the following prescription the next question? This is a test taking strategy. Think about it carefully. Look at the question. They are insulin, right? There's a reason why this is being asked. You have to know how it's given. You have to know the function. You have to know what type of insulin it is to be able to figure out which one is the question. 10 units of NPH subcutaneously twice a day. This is an intermediate insulin. Intermediate insulin is given twice a day. So go up and down. So twice a day. It's also given subcutaneously. Right? So that means the criteria is good. Now, Lusopro, right? They are the lag family. So that's the lag family. Lag family, what are they? The very, very, very fast acting, okay? And they are giving before breakfast. So I see Lysopro simultaneously before breakfast, I'm happy. This is long acting. And I see what? One time at bedtime, I think I'm good. Test taking strategy. Why not to be wrong? Glygine, what source? Through IV infusion. That's a drip for what? EKA. This is a concept. This is a content. You have to master what you think when you have DKA. There's only one insulin you should use. Regular insulin. This is the only one is given by IV and we use it for what? As a drip for DKA. Glygine, no, you can be used as a DKA. So that's our wrong answer. So that's the one we're supposed to intervene. You see, it's a concept you know. I know you've seen this before. You see it on the table. Everybody is memorizing the short acting, long acting, onset. But then when they give you the question, you have to apply it. You have to apply your knowledge. You have to bring the content that you've listened, that you watched, that you've studied. And you have to know key aspect of each medication. 
NPH is giving SACQ, and because it's intermediate twice a day, it's okay. Losopro is the fast acting. Therefore, it's giving SACQ because it's fast acting. As soon as you give it, it starts working. So you got to take it before breakfast, right? After they take it, no one they eat. Then determinant is usually, determine is sub Q. It's a long acting. It should be given once a day. It has no peak. And I see at bedtime, it's very good. I see glaging, which is a short acting. Hey, no, it's a fast acting. What do I see? I see an IV infusion in front of it. I know we don't go IV infusion. The only thing I see for DKA is a regular insulin. Therefore, normal for I need to intervene. That's the end of series. Five videos. Two of them, if you want to watch, it has high yield fat, really good concept. You got to be a member to be able to watch it. Just check that out and click join the membership and you'll be fine. Take care of yourself. If you love this video, share it, subscribe it to grow the channel. Be good and have a good day. All the best of luck. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.